Let's dive into the gaming explosion that's happening in Web3. We'll break it all down for you. There's a lot of working parts to this one, so keep up. It's going to pay off for you, I promise. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back into Tech Path. Let's get into it today. I do want to thank our sponsor, and that is Tangem. If you want to get into self-custody, and you should be in self-custody, one of the places to go is over to Tangem.com. And the cool thing about Tangem is, one, they have the wallet, and of course, you can get the ring as well. This is by far one of the easiest wallets out there to use, set up, and get going. So if you're brand new to self-custody, this is the one for you. Use our code, click over to that Get Tangem button right there, get the three cards set, and you're all good. Just use the code down below, get a discount. All right, let's go into a couple of points I want to lead off with. And of course, I think everybody was aware that Off the Grid is was right at the cusp of launching on Xbox. This has been launched on Xbox, though it is limited in release right now. But uh, the fact that we've got a Web3 uh, game in Xbox is pretty crazy. This is a tweet we put out. Again, no findings here that that was caused by that, but it was just kind of a fun uh, little analysis here of Xbox and what uh, Off the Grid could be doing if we get a Web3 going, uh, which I think is going to be, I think it's going to be happening. We're going to see a lot more uh, strategies that are building around this, and you'll see what I mean here in a second. I do want to go to a clip real quick, and the clip I want to get into is where John Wu, we've had uh, John Wu on the show many times, but this is a clip of him talking about the U.S. versus what's really happening in gaming elsewhere. Take a look. We've just seen Sony announcing its own Layer 2. You're obviously doing stuff with Japanese corporates. I'm seeing everywhere. What What is happening in Japan that's suddenly kind of switched on the light bulb for the Japanese corporate players. What is going on there? Are you seeing the same? Japanese corporates, Korean corporates, and other places in the world don't have as much uncertainty of what they think a stable coin will be or not be going forward and what's considered a security or not a security going forward. And they're willing to now take the uh, steps in terms of developing technology for that clar when that cl clarity becomes imminent. They're doing it on schedule. Unfortunately, we in the U.S. are off schedule a little bit. All right, so what John was talking about is really kind of the isolationism that's happening here in the U.S. where we don't even really understand what's going on worldwide, especially around gaming. So we kind of have this limited bubble and thinking around this, and this includes gaming companies as well. So we're going to break down all that for you. But this is exploding elsewhere, and I think this is just the beginning of something pretty crazy in the gaming sector. Here, of course, is the Sonium uh, one of the Sonium teams, and this is Soda, talking a little bit more about Sonium. We did a full breakdown on Sonium and their launch. This is Sony's blockchain that will start to accelerate pretty heavily. If you look at just some of the tweets here, 1,700 applications in a month are coming in on this. So you can kind of see they are all in on where this potentially could go. And this, of course, will include not only blockchain gaming, but a lot of other uh, implications as well. Another thing that's playing into this has been the support that the government has had behind this. This, of course, is the digital minister of the Japanese government. Uh, so we've got not only partnerships, but awareness of how this is going to affect their business models in the future around gaming, around digital assets, and, of course, technology, I think, going forward is much more accepted right now with what we're seeing in, in Japan. So again, the United States is a bit uh, a bit behind. If you look at where the money is going, you have to kind of follow what's happening actually here in the U.S. Here's Berkshire Hathaway joining the trillion dollar, but Meta is the fast to reach the milestone. And if you kind of look down the list here, let me kind of zoom in on that for you guys, just to give you an example. Fastest to uh, one trillion, Meta hits it. And of course, Meta is coming, guys. Meta is coming for the top tier in this. And I think gaming is on the front of everyone's mind, including Mark Zuckerberg, Obviously, we've seen that with just what happened with MetaConnect and the advancement of what they've done in their AR, VR goggles. So this is going to be a pretty huge step forward in the next few months. All right, so think about games out here. This, of course, is Power World on Microsoft, Xbox, just out into the Japanese market. You can kind of see what they're talking about here with PS5, but Power World already off to a great start, just getting going, second most popular game when it comes to active PC players. So very, very uh, successful in a short period of time in Japan. The announcement that they made, Power World, uh, was doing a joint venture with Sony 
uh, music entertainment, so Sonium, that means what? Do we potentially have Sonium being involved into this into this project as well. Again, Power World, very successful, but they haven't necessarily locked down a business model. They they talk about it here in this post. We're not changing our game's business model to remain uh, buy-to-play uh, and uh, and not free-to-play, but they're also considering skins and uh, DLC for Power World in the future, which means uh, this could go in the route of a Web3 strategy. So this is one I'm watching very closely because it is, and remember, the Power World CEO, very, very friendly to crypto. He understands it. He, uh, I would say he's somewhat of a DJ himself. So the opportunity here is pretty big. At the Tokyo Game Show, this is the Tokyo Game Show. Look at who all is there. You've got Yo Gil Games right there, Polygon, Pocket Pair, which is Power World, all lined up in there. So a lot of Web3 presence at the Tokyo Game Show, which is a benefit because of the fact that this market is exploding so quickly with these opportunities. I want to go to a couple of clips here, back to back. This is Phil Spencer on the Japanese market. Take a look. It's a pleasure to be back at Tokyo Game Show. We're continuing to see growth in the region. This year, more people are playing with Xbox across all devices in Asia than ever before. And we've seen the largest number of Xbox console players in the region to date. So as you can see, the strategy on Microsoft uh, well understanding of where this is going. Phil Spencer also talks a little bit more about the handheld craze that the Japanese have because Nintendo, uh, the success of that, the popularity of it. So the likelihood of a handheld think airdrops and how this might play out. Here's another clip to take a look at. An Xbox handheld? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we cloud. should have a handheld. I think so. I think we you, have a handheld. Do you want to say anything about I, No, I don't want to say it. I think being able to play games locally is really important. You can, you can read between the lines on that. So when you think handhelds, you have to think Steam. And uh, interesting point right here, Steam actually has a trading card uh, for Power World. Uh, there's no value to them, so they, they haven't necessarily understood the potential here, but I think that is really where the market demand could open up. Here's the Steam cr trading cards right here. This is an example of all the different various games that are out there where you can collect them. Again, no, no necessarily rewards or value. The idea of mobile trading cards, mobile uh, integrations into Web3, all of this is starting to loom, I think, into a potential opportunity for the next phase. So how does that play into this? Well, here's breaking news right here. Power World is coming to mobile. Pocket Pair has signed an agreement with Krafton to bring Power World to all mobile platforms in development by the studio behind PUBG. So remember PUBG and their relationship with Fortnite. There was a lot of a, a rub there. This is an opportunity, I think, for Krafton to really start breaking into what could be the edge of the Web3 space, and Power World may be the, the way that they go into this. So remember back in 2023, there was this tweet, oh, well, this was some time ago, but there was a partnership with Krafton and Solana they were trying to go into a metaverse development partnership. Then what happened was Krafton doing their own blockchain, Settlus. This was a test that launched uh, pretty quickly. You can kind of see the movement here. And then they rebranded their game. And this was Overdare, which is the new game. All of that tied into what's happening now. So now we come to full circle where you have, no pun intended, Jeremy Allaire talking about this talking about Korea's Krafton, who are now launching a large-scale Roblox-style metaverse. Let me zoom in on that right there. On Circle with wallet infrastructure. Here's a little bit of the Overdare platform, Krafton's journey into the metaverse. Uh, joint venture was about Oz and Naver Z. This is, of course, going to a, a, an Unreal UCG platform. So lots of new development here. And again, big times ahead, I think, for Web3 Gaming as a whole. But the key here is that you've got this idea of user-generated content. And again, this is where it gets interesting because this will start to play into the strategy around what Krafton is trying to do. And it goes, again, toward Web3 Gaming. I want to go to a couple more clips here. This one is the mythical CEO talking about the potential shift in Tim Sweeney's mind. Take a look. So the fact that we're starting to see 50, you know, 50 plus percent increase in revenue from secondary fees is a very, very interesting piece and it's waking up a lot of the industry right now. But we also saw the players spend about 33% more time in the game. They were 33% more engaged when they had the ability to sell than when they didn't. 
Uh, overall, we see about 3x the spend. So a player that, that has the ability to sell spends about three times as much money, including twice as many in the, in the actual original store, the original purchase that are meant as well. And about 12% of the overall spend will go directly back in the economy almost immediately. Right? Fortnite did about five, we'll just round it to five billion last year. So they would see roughly about $20 billion if, if they follow the same trends, which I think they probably would double their revenue if they started thinking about models like this. And we actually had an opportunity to speak with Tim Sweeney and show him this data, and it's definitely starting to light up a lot of interest in the space. So but what we are seeing is we're seeing a lot of other groups. We started a foundation called Mythos, but in that, in that group right now, we actually have 22 other companies that have already joined Mythos. So we have groups like Animoca, we have groups like Sega and Krafton that makes PUBG, Bandai, we have a lot of groups in Japan that have already joined. We have, this is where this innovation is going to come from. So hopefully you guys see the track here. Mythos, of course, is one of the, the projects I think that is going to be a big winner here. Of course, all riding on uh, Polkadot. Polkadot most likely will also have some impact here. Further into this, a big point I think he was trying to make is that there is a shift occurring right now in the gaming sector from traditional Web 2 to Web 3 gaming, and we're starting to see real solutions that are applying to what the gaming business is about, and that's going to be revenue opportunities. So they go a little bit further into this. This is another clip right here talking about the Mythical and the Krafton demo. Take a look. And watch how seamless it is to move between these. So about three seconds, and I'm in the game, fully in the game. Nothing installed on the machine. I can see and stream the entire Blancos game. Five definition, 1080p, uh, running through this about three or four megabits a second. When I turn around, you're gonna see a portal appear, and inside that, you're gonna see an Unreal 4 game running live inside of Unity. I can walk through that portal, and I'm instantly in the other game and controlling that game. We even kind of play around with interoperability. You'll see the Billy Bones uh, jacket. So I've literally moved from company to company uh, without ever installing anything on my local machine. Why is this pretty interesting? Well, I think you start connecting companies together. We have three or four companies now that we're working with to get some of this stuff live. All right, so all of that we've shown here on the show before. Go back into a lot of our Web3 gaming content. You kind of get a little bit there. We did some Blancos videos, but remember this is an Amazon game. Speaking of Amazon, one of the things that's happening with Amazon is they've got into a role that's speeding up a lot more of the development. This is a new senior business development manager who is Web3 savvy, William Morse. And within these tweets, there was a lot of activity of people saying, hey, I want to reach out to you about this. So quickly, what happened within a short period of time, right here on the front page, uh, right here, weekly drops from 100 plus games, but Grid was one of the ones that, of course, was reaching out. So there's an opportunity here, I think, for Web3 to get a foothold within Amazon Gaming, and this could start to uh, speed things up overall. Amazon Video Games, first ever Web3 Game Rewards Pack now on an Amazon is officially live, so you can actually do this now on Amazon, and if you look at what's available, they've already started selling these credits to redeem these digital rewards. All of this, again, I mean, if you look at this, guys, this is these are NFTs, tokens, however you want to play it. This is Web3 value that's starting to make its way into gaming. One other thing to watch real closely is this right here. Get exclusive PAL skins by watching streams on Twitch. This could be a business model that starts to break out in a lot of these streaming platforms, game uh, layers, including places like Amazon, Netflix, et cetera, including Twitch and other entertainment. Because think about this. This is more about the entertainment zone that is going to be moving into everything from exclusive value through skins, all sorts of in-game rewards. Imagine brands that start to break into this area and use these kinds of tactics to basically get players to engage. So a lot of opportunity here, and it's happening very fast. This is the bull run that I think we are finally going to see Web3 gaming break out. All right, I want to go to a quick clip. This is one of the experiments by Amazon that kind of will give you an insight to where this is going. Take a look. This world has waited for your arrival. Have a game to play. One other thing I want to hit on is, of course, what's happening with Lollipop Racing. We did a full breakdown on this yesterday on the Avalanche video. Go back and check it out because Feature.io deployed a special type of technology that is really going to engage content in a different way. So you got eight days left until this Lollipop Racing teaser hits. And once that happens, the likelihood of Amazon, Netflix, and others 
being able to see how Web3 integrated content can be, smart content, is going to be used, could be on display right in front of them. So this could open their eyes up to where the, all of this is going, again, where Web3 is going, and a lot of these kind of technologies. This course is riding on Avalanche, so another major gaming play that we're watching very closely. Anytime you're at the beginning of a market, you want to look at a couple of things. When everybody's digging for gold, here's a good tweet on this right here. People are selling shovels. In this particular case, you know, NVIDIA is out there. This is a good example. I want to go one more layer down. Look at those three logos right there. Microsoft, Google, Meta. Now I want you to take a look at the projects that potentially are the shovels for those kinds of projects. Think about gaming. Think about a lot of these uh, bridge projects out there, a lot of the ev evolving L1s, and really where some of the play is going to happen globally, not just here in the United States, but globally. And then you start to see things like Avalanche, Polkadot, what we're going to see with Mythos, what we're going to see within the game, gaming sector. We are going to do a full-blown token analysis for Web3 Gaming because I think what has changed in the last really 12 months is dramatic. So what we looked at in 2021, 2022, and maybe even in 2023, I think has really changed a lot. So make sure and stick around for that. If you're not subscribed to the video and or the channel, make sure and do that right now. Get in on the Diamond Circle. It's our own custom group where we do additional content and research, just like what you guys went through right there. All right, so make sure and catch me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath. Bath.